Hello everybody, Andrea here with Dental L. So let's talk about the dental assisting board exam and how I feel you should really start studying because as with anything in life, if you're not looking forward to something, if you're dreading something, the hardest part is just getting started, right? But what I wanna teach you guys is how to study the right way so you make the most use of your time because I'm sure you have better things to do than study, but you really don't if you are studying to pass the board exam. So what I want you to do is to really get organized and even purchase a study agenda from the dollar store, study, um, purchase a calendar, something like that from the dollar store. It doesn't have to be expensive and put out per day on the calendar, on the agenda, um, what you want to study. So what I suggest is setting aside six hours a day at the most to study or one hour to two hours a day at the least. So let's say you work full time. You might not be able to study six hours a day. So on those days that you do have to work, study one or two hours a day minimum, okay? I want you guys to be studying every day to really help to retain the information, but you're only human. So what I also suggest is taking a day off sometimes. Um, if you're anything like me, when I was a student, I had a hard time taking a day off. I would just be stressing the whole day thinking, oh, I should be studying. I should be studying. So you're not really enjoying your time off, but take a break. So how you can get around that is let's say study in the morning, but then take the rest of the day off so you can truly enjoy your day off or take the day off, but then study for two hours that night. You know, you get the idea if you really have to study, but try to take a day off every two weeks or so just to really give yourself that time to relax and take a break. Um, but don't study more than six hours and do not study until 2 a.m. If you're tired, if you're hungry, anything you study is not going to be retained. You're going to forget it. You're gonna get upset. You're gonna get stressed out it's not good. So that's what I suggest doing first is plan out your study time. If you have kids, if you work full time, if you have other commitments, you need to do something to, I'm not saying change it, but if you have kids, is there a family member who can watch the kids a couple times a week for two hours so you can get studying in? You can't study with kids running around. You can't study if you have to do laundry, cook, clean, all of that. It's really difficult. You have to do what you have to do, of course, but try to work around it. What else I want you to do is plan out what topics you're going to study and how you're going to do it. So as an example, oral pathology you want to study tomorrow. For two hours, you're going to read your oral pathology chapter in your textbook. For one hour, you're going to look through your oral pathology notes in school and study those. For half an hour, you're going to take a mock exam practice test on oral pathology. So write all of that down. Be specific. It will feel good to cross those off once you're done doing them. Check them off, highlight them, whatever you want to do. It does feel good to do that. If you are in my full um, dental assisting board exam prep academy, I have laid all of that out for you in module. So you actually don't have to be organized. I do the organization for you. I tell you what to study, when to study and how long to study it. So if you're in the course, just have a look at that and then you don't have to worry. The nice thing about being inside my full study course is we will also have live tutoring sessions where I go through mock exam topics for about 45 minutes to one hour or sorry, mock exam questions on a topic and that helps you practice your critical thinking. You need to know critical thinking to pass the board exam, but you can't study for that. You truly can't. It's something that has to be taught. So I teach that to you as we go through the mock exam practice questions and picking which one answer is the most correct. Two answers will always be correct. One answer will be the most correct. So I teach you guys how to do that. Studying critical thinking and mock exams are difficult to do on your own. So let me help you. That is the best way to study. So I hope that helps you guys. I hope that helps you get started. If you have any questions, comment below and I look forward to teaching you all.